Hello and welcome to this video about data structures. In this video we'll learn how to make a computer function that can print out the list of the first n derivatives of the tangent of x, written out as algebra rather than as just numbers, like we have written it here on this page. So the first rule is that when writing a variable that's raised to the power of 1, then we write the variable without writing any indice. I've circled the examples here in red. The next rule is that if a number is written here multiplied by a variable raised to the power of 0, then we just write the number without writing the variable. We don't have any examples here because none of the terms are constants. The next rule is that if we have the number 1 multiplied by any variable that's raised to the power of a non-zero number, then we don't write the 1. The first two expressions are examples of this. The fourth rule is that if we have a number 1 on its own with no variables, that is, all of the variables are raised to the power of 0, then we just write the number 1. This is different to rule 2, because we always write the numbers that are different to 1 and 0, but we almost never write in the number 1. The fifth rule is that we never write in a variable if it is raised to the power of 0, but we write in all of the other variables. Here are some examples. This rule is different enough to rule 2 to be mentioned. And the last rule is to not write the plus sign after the last term. Now to write some computer code to print out the table of tangent derivatives. We'll declare the function and we'll write it out in the third biggest heading font. Then we'll make a loop to go through every expression in the table. We'll get the start and end pointers to this expression in the table. We'll use the variable y to indicate which derivative it is. We'll make up a string for each expression and add characters onto the end of it to build up the entire expression in one string. If it's the first, second or third derivative, we'll write it out in dash notation. And we'll make up a loop to write in the number of dashes that we require to represent the first to third derivatives. If it's the fourth derivative or greater, then we'll write in the number as an indice in brackets. Then we'll write the equal sign. This is extremely obvious. We'll make up a loop to go through every term in the expression. We'll get all of the constants for each of these terms. We've eliminated all of the terms with zero constants, so that we won't need to work with these sorts of terms. So here's the first rule of algebra. We'll definitely write out the constant if it isn't 1. There weren't any coefficients of minus 1, so we could ignore this. This line says that if there aren't any variables and 1 appears on its own, then we'll write out the 1. There aren't any variables if they're raised to the power of 0. If the variable s is raised to the power of 1, then we'll write it out on its own, without any indice. And if s is raised to a number that isn't 1 or 0, then we'll write out the indice being equal to the number it is raised to. We'll do the same thing with the variable t. If it is raised to the power of 1, then we'll write out the t on its own, without any indice. But if it's raised to a number that isn't 1 or 0, then we'll write in the indice. Notice that if it is raised to the power of 0, then we won't write it out. We only not need to include any code to do anything if it's raised to the power of 0. So these are the plus signs that are written between the terms. The condition in the if statement means that it won't write out the plus sign after the last term. So here's where we'll write out this expression with a carriage return or new line after it. And then we'll write out another new line at the end and stop printing in the heading font. And if we swap the letters s and t with x and u, then we get a function that can print out the inverse cosine derivative table. So this is the table written out to the 11th derivative. I've created and checked this table in another video and it's written out in such a way that it's easier to understand than if it was only in numbers. So I hope that you have found this video to be helpful and interesting. Please click like and subscribe if you did. Feel free to share this video. Please leave some helpful thoughts and ideas in the comments. And thanks a lot for watching.